black market cat in general from Capital Airsoft. Unfortunately, somebody uh, said that they're having a trigger issues with one of the weapons that I sold them, so this is my response to that. I just have a little uh, demonstration piece, so that's what I'm planning to unfortunately use as a demonstration, what could be the issue, and then afterwards I'm going to take two of my own apart and then kind of, you know, go over the process of what also could be your problem at the same time. But unfortunately, I'm going to use this little uh, thing that you just saw on the front, and in general, to kind of explain what the issue might be. So, uh, two in general, it's A, potentially your contrigger, which would be right around here. Which A is probably not pushing up against this little guy right, right here. Which unfortunately, that's the other thing. It's like if, it's, if your trigger's not eventually uh, proper, it's probably A, A two things in general. It's not pushing up against this, which is connecting to these little wires right. These little, uh, where's the little tool? Um, this little guy right here. Unfortunately, A, there's another little problem that can happen in general. So when it's pushing like here, um, you can see it slightly touches the prongs. A, it could be the other prong on the other side that isn't connecting, even not giving you a full uh, potential uh, connection, because when this touches that, that causes that to, you know, fire your weapon. Unfortunately, there is always issues that can happen over time, which I have a little one, which is this little guy. Um, the little edges can sometimes get over time wore down, since it is a piece of copper. So either A, it's gotten worn down to a point where it's not usable, or it's gotten kind of gunk on it to a point where it can't function. Or, like I said, the trigger itself is not potentially, uh, like I said, A, it's probably moving it like so, like this. But, but uh, whatever reason, these things are not connecting. Your best bet to do, to fix that is to actually somehow open it up and push them back together. Like, you know, push them like this and like that to, to get it to connect properly. Uh, but half the time, um, even if it is somewhat worn down, that like if the thing was worn down, which was, as this one isn't as much, um, this, if you look very carefully, you can see this one's been worn down a little bit, quite a bit, but a little bit, but it's still enough that it isn't really bad. So it could be a number of things, but until I opened up your rifle, I wouldn't really know. So there's a few things that it could be or couldn't be, but that's probably my best bet. Since you said in general that the thing hooks and does a few things, but as you said, it's just like the trigger's dead. So A, it could A mean your trigger's dead, or potentially one of the mechanisms right around here, what would be in here is, like, you know, got caught, or it could be something up in the main uh, piston up here that could be causing the main uh, issue, which could cause a seize up, or maybe if for whatever reason, then uh, the thing maybe is connecting, or A, you're, like, if you're trying to fire it way too fast, it could cause it to seize up. And when that happens, if it seizes up perfectly, which I call a perfect seize up, when you try to switch it to uh, full auto or non-full auto, it won't go back to normal. Because sometimes they, when, you, when you fire them off, they uh, all of a sudden, you know, like they'll seize up on occasion. You have to switch it to full auto to get it to unseize. But a perfect seize up is potentially an aspect where it seizes up and you can't you do any of that. And you have to actually go inside the actual thing to undo it. I've seen it with enough rifles as it is, which I have to admit is annoying. Because it's like, oh, I have to do all that and just to unseize it. And then it's just kind of a big pain in my butt. But, you know... Take care of your crap in general and learn how to use the rifles properly. I know it's a little harsh, but hey, I'm getting annoyed at actually having to fix things, but I really can't complain because that means if you think it's broken, it means you just throw it away practically and it means more, or what do you call it, easy, easy peasy done work for me if you just sell it to me or think it's busted. So in a sense, I can't complain because even though in general I, I can, I will complain, but unfortunately it doesn't change the fact that it generates more revenue for me and anyone else out there, because like if they don't know how to do it themselves, then technically you're just kind of screwed. And you're like, well, maybe I just bought it like a new rifle from a new store, and now it's already having issues, and they can't seem to figure out. Nobody else can seem to figure it out. But unfortunately, like sometimes it's something that most people don't aren't aware of. That sometimes it's the, it's the small little idiosyncrasies is in general, and it's that's the thing that people don't seem to focus on enough when doing repairs. I like to eventually look at every little thing and pick it apart like crazy. So today in general, like I said, I'm gonna eventually take apart a compl every little part of an M4, or uh, uh, which pretty much they're more or less the same to some degree, unless if you've been really modifying the living crap out of them. But other than that, I'm just gonna go at it and show you what I do. So this aside in general, I will be eventually um, taking one of my other ones apart or because it is actually having the exact same issue. So it should probably have the same kind of gearbox, just maybe a little bit different, but I'll show you how I go about re realigning it, and then I'll put that same gearbox in a different gun, fire it to show you in general that it's probably one of those issues.
So, that aside. Also, one of my other friends is wanting me to move uh, one of my, well, he's already paid for the pieces, but he wants me to move a better gearbox from one of my other ones to one of his. But at the same time, I'm going to move that gearbox into the other one. Uh, but unfortunately, since it's having the, a trigger seizing issue like yours, I'm going to do, do that pretty much on screen as well. So, unfortunately, I'll probably migrate the, as you can see, there's the two rifles right there, the M4s. Uh, one's metal, one's not, but he likes the plastic because he likes to run around really quickly. So, my idea is to move the better gearbox into that one, then potentially take out that gearbox and then fix it, to then after that, potentially put it back into there. So, a migration of parts and actually opening it up. So, I'm going to show you how all of that happens with pretty much those. So, I guess I'll have to get to it. And that's how you get the main stock off. But give me a minute. And I just want to listen to something while I do this. I do better when I'm having fun, but until you're listening to something. Yeah, this is pretty much what I do in general. So if you're wondering why, uh, where do you call, where I get this stuff, or what I do in general while I'm repairing this, you pretty much get to see exactly what I'm doing while I'm doing this kind of stuff. Yeah, I'll go with that one. Now, if you have one of these, just plug it out like there, take it off like that. And unfortunately, I forgot that I actually oh, no wait. Yeah, this should be long enough, possibly. Yeah, the reason why I don't prefer to use power tools or anything like that is for good reason. Because unfortunately you really get to know if you're over over tightening it or not tightening it light enough. You can feel it right in your hand if you're good at that kind of thing. Fortunately if you're not, well then I feel sorry for anyone but you has screwed up the rifle horribly. And unfortunately that part won't come off because of that certain discernible piece because it's different. So take out that first. There we go. Yeah, sometimes they're different, as you can clearly see. Unfortunately, mine's different. Uh, some of them actually don't have this little piece. Like, it's actually, uh, like, welded onto the thing or inside the thing. But, you know, so you can kind of see that there's all different types. And I'm pretty sure you'll see the difference when I start taking apart the other one as well. And that's mainly connected. Especially the wires, like, the, as you can see, the wires not really... Well, it's just a little bit rugged, but it's nothing, anything. The main uh, coating on it, from the looks of it, is still fine, so that should be just fine. Fortunately, this isn't loud enough. Yeah, I'm in my pajamas, and so what? It's coronavirus day or whatever the heck, and I'm just, well, yeah, I'm just doing this because, you know, to kill time. Also, for our own hilarity's sake, in general, why is everyone ever up and using the word racist so much? It's like, I'm going to make a joke out of that at some point, so I'll wait for that to take punchline at some point. And unfortunately, that's going to keep spinning, so until then, I will, won't mess with that at the current moment. But this one looks like it's okay. There we go. So where do I put these little parts? Well, I'll just show you what I do with that. As you can tell that this is a little bit it's gonna keep spinning until I get something so unfortunately I will unfortunately have to go get myself a little thing to hold it so my cameraman's gonna sit right here for a few seconds and I'll be right back in a second to go grab my tool eh, if I don't have one already here with me yeah. Ah, 
next room over. Got lucky. Yeah, you pretty much want to hold it like that and then she use the other one, but then she, you know, to twist, which can be a bit of a pain. If you're doing it one-handed, your best bet, go like this in general. Have one hand on this side like so, if you can. What you have to, since it's a little bit loose, I can have to push it like this with this finger like this. Clamp with that hand like this. Tilt over the edge like so. And kind of, you know, it's a little bit of a trickiness, but it takes a bit of time. Or you can actually try to wide open it, which can be a bit of a pain in the butt. Oh, so let me just take that little part off so I can get that out of the way. Yeah. Or better yet, why don't you just do it like this? <laughs> ah! Crap. Ah. Forgot how annoying these things are. There we go. Yeah. That's probably the better way. Hold it like so, sideways like this, as best you can, then go like that. Ah, crap, I pinched myself like, what, three times already? Ouch. That's gonna be real annoying. It's gonna be sore for a while. And then after that. Oh, come on. Okay, let's. Oh, yeah, right. Pull back like this a little bit. And then kind of lever it up like so. Fortunately, sometimes it likes to get caught on there. So, as you can see, the main little part right here gets caught on that part right there. Sure so, sometimes you have to pull back and then kind of, you know, push it up a little bit like that and kind of build it off. Huh. Which it's one of these systems, but as you can see, well, even st at the moment, it's kind of locked up. And even when I tried using a battery, it wouldn't do anything because it's kind of locked up. So this is a different one that I have worked on before, like these kind of. So, yeah, it should be easy enough to do so. Sometimes they're all different, but pretty much they're all kind of the same to some degree in my mind. Man, that's going to sting for a while. And be uncomfortable with all balls. Uh, nope. Nope. Yellow one. Now for the more fun and annoying part, um, let's see, yeah, that one. You guys said you wanted me to do things like this, so I thought, why the heck not? Even though in general most of my other videos probably don't have any discernible reason, there were just things I was doing at the time, so if you want to see me do still more things of that nature, of what I was doing earlier in my other videos, that's really up to you guys, if anything. I have really nothing better to do, and it looks like some one of the parts might have fallen out. It was that little, uh, the little spot, the little white bracket, or little spot that levers that up. I should have been a little more careful, but I don't think it fell anywhere. It might have unfortunately fell inside the gun. Uh, which is going to be a big pain in my butt. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, it did. Luckily enough, I guess I got lucky on that. Since the may motor is magnetized, it actually caught the piece for me, luckily enough.
Now there's usually two screws in there that can be a little bit of a bastard to get off and in. And trust me, this is the part that I usually hate about most of these half the time. But I've done so many of them, i just kind of gotten to a point where I just accept it. And they're all different sizes and shapes which can be annoying and you have to use the right tools for everything or you just strip it. And sometimes it's almost like they're glued in for crap's sakes. It's like, what the heck were you doing, guys? But, you know, all companies are different. I won't, like, I'm pretty sure in my other videos I've said which ones I prefer or which ones I don't, but everything in general, I don't really prefer any branding. I just prefer whatever feels nice in my head, what feels good and makes me have a good time. I'd, but if I had to say the ones that most people see me using is probably uh, Wii Tech. Those are the ones I actually worked on, like, um, that I actually started on at first. Unfortunately, um, uh, there's actually another YouTuber um, that actually, um, I saw his, him taking about his stuff. And, oh, in the long run, that's actually what kind of got me into this all at once. I know I've already talked about this a little bit, but I'm at, later on, I am actually at the end of this. I'll try to figure out what his YouTube channel was. I don't think he'll even know who I am, but... That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't really matter to me. I just want to, you know, show them the gratitude in the sense. Because, if anything, the whole reason why I even got into this is because of that slight video. Now, here's always this slight always pain in my butt. Getting all this stuff off. I think, let's see. Yeah, that's most everything. Yeah, sometimes you have to kind of uh, wiggle it around and sometimes it can get annoying. <sighs> but... Yeah, come on. Okay, no. Yeah, this one clearly still holding it in. Hmm. Oh, right. See. I even made my own uh oh again, even after all this time. This little sucker right here. Yeah, I'll keep making mistakes like that on occasion. Even when I do this like a thousand times, I still make those mistakes. Like I said, people think I'm all that in a bag of chips when I do this, but no. I still make the usual rookie mistake all the time, which is kind of funny when it happens. See, now it's just, you know, loose. Ugh. What? Okay, well, that might be a whole issue entirely because that is like stuck on there, as you can clearly see. Well, in that case, my best bet would probably be uh, probably take the motor from the other one because I'm pretty sure that one has a little bit more power. Maybe it might be the same. Maybe it's a little bit newer. But I'll probably take this motor and probably put it in the other one. But until then, I'll probably just use this stuff. I'll try how I take that stuff apart regardless. Unfortunately, I won't lie. These little, these little things like on the side are sometimes what helps uh, to do the selector switch. I don't lie, even though they are a bit better, I, I hear, and so on, I just don't like those ones as nearly as much. They're just not really my thing, in a sense, that, yeah, I get it, it gives you a better control of this and that. I'm not really sure what they are. I just kind of know what they do. I'm not really that smart on it. So I, will, I won't lie, I'm pretty much an idiot when it comes to what that does, except for I know it somehow contacts a little node somewhere in there that somehow says, oh, I'm on semi or I'm on full. But that aside... That's all I really know what what they do do. I just like I said, I don't know how it how it really what it does. I just know the main functions of what it's supposed to do and what what the parts are doing. I just don't know how it really to explain it. I'm not good that kind of good at that kind of stuff. It's so unfortunate since that's there. And my idea is just to leave it hooked in like or at least somehow kind of connected like that, and then work around this and that. So I guess we'll kind of get to it. Yeah, first things first.
<laughs> oh, so yes, this is one of my other friends, but unfortunately, which, um, there's that guy who talks way too much. Fortunately, um, let's see. Yeah, I know, in general. Like, I know, Nathan, in general, your rifle should be a wood of fine, but, um, for whatever reason, there was a battery in it, and all of a sudden I heard it go off in the middle of the night when Monday knocked over something. That's my cat, if anyone's wondering, and unfortunately, your thing locked up, so I'm just kind of truly resetting it. So, if anything, this is also just another video to also help people, but also we'd eventually be taking one of the other motors from the other one that should have a little more power to help this one out. Don't worry, it's just still function like the LMG in general that we should, that we originally intended for this thing originally. Yeah, 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 I know in general. Before you keep bitching and complaining, I bet at this screen, I bet in general, like I said. Well, that aside, like I said, the thing needs a little uh, cleaning anyway. It probably needs a little tune-up. Besides, I said I was going to do something like this with your rifle, uh, the, the rifle that you pretty much I uh, gave you in the long run, so... If anything, this is something that I had to do to the rifle anyway, that this is long overdue. So in a sense, consider this that uh, we call it an upgrade and a slight tune-up that in general for free. If any parts get damaged, I'm still going to replace them anyway. But unfortunately, after that, after this point, in general, any problems that it has in general is technically on you. It means any money that you have to put sink into it is on you. And to be honest with you, I think these parts are way too expensive in, in my mind. Yeah, the, like if you're ever getting into airsoft, you have to keep in mind like complexity of like, oh, I see a lot of people trying to you know play a big fish you're like. Saying, oh, I'm a big guy, but really, in general, all I see is, unfortunately, idiots. But, hey, I'm not saying in general, that also goes for myself. Just because, in general, I say you're an idiot, doesn't mean I'm still acceptable to my own human flaws. So, technically, I, I fall right alongside everyone else when I say that. So, I'm not demeaning anyone. Um, if anything, I'm demeaning myself when I say that as well. I don't lie, I like big weapons and odd parts, but even still, sometimes it can get a little bit overwhelming. But for new players, if you're getting into it, don't try to potentially, you know, go all in, like, you know, like in a gambling match. If anything, you want something minimal, you know, in the sense, you don't want to have high-end accuracy or something that's, you know, like a bullet, like like a laser. Because unfortunately, you're not going to hit anything with your skill set. If anything, you want to have a little bit of spread on your gun. Because if you don't have any spread on your gun when you're trying to hit like perfectly down like a straight line, yeah, unless it's a standing still in a sense, or very minimally realistic moving, you're not going to hit crap. I already know when I was there at one point, the guy was having some issue with his own, like uh, he was having some trouble. So he was having actually, I think he was having a slight bad day in a sense if I remember correctly. And he was, and then afterwards I'm like, hey, can I take a look at your rifle? And I changed and I remember telling him like, the reason why you're not really hitting anything is because your thing's too accurate. And he says, well, why is that a bad thing? Well, the well, the reason why is, like I said, I told him, and I'll tell you everyone now, is the fact that if the thing's too accurate, it's going to be like a straight arrow, like this in general. So if, oh, if I actually that he's running this way, if, if my gun doesn't have enough FPS while I'm shooting at him like this, it's only going to be right behind him like that. So if he's running, all I'm doing is actually firing my bullet with a low, with not a high enough FPS so that it's not going to travel at a high velocity to hit him in that straight line. And even the farther it is, the harder it is. You've got to actually, you know, place your, like a, your bullet line so when it, when it fires here, it's going to hit him here. So you have to get like, aim like this. And most new players aren't going to be have that, have that fortitude or the kind of, you know, mental capacity to do that. I'm not saying in general that uh, achieving that kind of capacity and combat skill isn't isn't doable anyone can learn it if they just take the time to learn all the skills yes it is hard hard and uh, don't ask where i get all these skills from because like i said that comes from a, a really screwed up past that i have but if you really want to know in general about my past like i said well just keep commenting and maybe i might talk about it someday <laughs> I, unfortunately uh, but the thing is so when he's running if i have the thing spread out even if I have just like a little about the aiming line, just a little bit in front of him or even on him, the spread will kind of, you know, act like a little bit like a, think of like a shotgun spread. It's going to spread out, guaranteeing that he just go, that it, even, if it, if, even if the bullets are a little bit farther behind him, the spread should still span out enough so it can hit him regardless, like that. But that aside in general, everyone always like, oh yeah, but isn't the high accuracy really good? Yeah, if you're potentially depending on the person. 
just because in general everyone says oh this or that doesn't mean you should get suckered into it everyone even even you in general as the person who is using the weapon is different and i can easily look at a person and say oh what kind of weapon it would be best suited to you or in general what would be the best idea i it's just one of my weird skill sets that i have in life i don't understand how it really works with me i just know in general that's just how i preferably work i don't understand it myself but that's just how it is. Now, enough of that. Let's get this sucker open since we've been doing that a while, and I'll keep explaining it along the way. Uh, so, unfortunately, the other thing is, like I said, uh, well, unfortunately, that's, you know, unfortunately, my bet would probably be a flathead, but like I said, um, your best bet is to, for any new player who's getting into it, I wouldn't suggest anything substantial, like a really, like, high-end expensive rifle, like, you know, like the big boy rifles. I'd say your best bet is to probably get, like, an M4. Oh, yeah, M4s are kind of common, and it's like, why would I want something kind of, you know, common or something, you know, that, you know, is kind of plain. Well, unfortunately, if you're a new player, I don't really care what the flip you have to say. If, if it's not plain or so on or not, like, you don't want to be doing any of that crap for one reason. Because, unfortunately, it means, A, how much is it going to cost to repair it? Because now it's, you know, a better model or considered, you know, higher end. Meaning it's going to be harder to find parts and it's going to be, a, and if it's like a really, really, really expensive model that just happens to be like an import or even not an import or something that's, you know, really fancy. Sometimes it's going to be really flip all hard to get parts. I still can get them, but it doesn't change the fact that you're still going to be paying a crap ton. And most people in general, I don't mean anything by any other business when I say this, but it's like... You don't know the idiosyncrasies of the weapons half the time. Um, I don't mean any disrespect. It's just what I observe. And if anything, I won't lie. There's some things that I don't uh, uh, that I am I'm not able to do that potentially other uh, business owners are able to do because I'm just one person doing this by myself. And so the fact that I can do all this by myself just goes to show how well I've learned in general. So now we got the thing open. Unfortunately, like I said, the main trigger the thing should be like what I was talking about earlier should be right here, the little guys. So like I said, when I push this forward, you see how it kind of slowly touches on the main uh, part right there. Fortunately, as I can already tell in general that it's a little bit rubbed down, so it's not getting a perfect, perfect connection like it should have. And if you know in general, like I said, see, as soon as I hit that, it, you could hear a giant click. It's because something around in here and here and around in there should uh, got messed up. It's because when you're over, just going zzz, 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 like click, 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 it causes it this is somewhere, uh, somewhere, something, something in between all of this to get stuck, and then potentially boom, and general it locks up, and then you have to do all that, and general just to kind of you know, do a little bit of that, and then push on that. And fortunately, it looks like by just pushing on that, I could hear the click, which means it's probably good to go. But just to make sure, I'm gonna eventually just because I know that's rubbed down a little bit, I'm just gonna push that down just a little. Just enough that I can see it kind of push down a little bit. Okay, there we go. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's much better. <clears throat> now the hard part of getting all this crap back together. <laughs> oh boy. Well, unfortunately you get to see how that happens, so... As usual, here's a little spring that goes on this, which, unfortunately, if I remember correctly, goes like that. And then, potentially, you yeah, have that little piece like this. And that kind of pushes down with your thumb like that. Unfortunately, yes, I know I have long nails. I've yet to take a decent shower, which I've been meaning to. Well, I've been taking showers, but I just forgot to clip my nails. I know it's disgusting. Shut up. And potentially, you know, push it back like that. Make sure it's nice on there in general. Try to kind of leave it like that at best. Some are easier that sometimes they, they sometimes I'm lucky because it's one of these kind of models. So definitely it's actually holding in place by by itself. Sometimes I'd actually be holding both of these, which would be in pain, and most of this part would be trying to you know spring out, which can be a big pain. And even though that that's kind of trying to spring out just a little bit, uh, fortunately it's in the, it's good enough that I can set it in less right on here, which I'm very lucky for that. And the hardest part, which is the more Ah, oh, getting the spring back in. Nightmare and a half, as you can clearly see. Ah. And that's another reason why these things can piss me off like crazily. 
Okay, well, my better bet is probably to leave that out until I can somehow get that back in place. And it looks like that came off the hinge, so let's get that back on there, on the rail. Yeah. As soon as I can get that part back in, there's a good chance that I should be able to just let it sit there. Yeah, come on. Son of a bitch! Ah. 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 This is going to be one of those nightmare ones. Yeah, anyone who tries this in general, just if you think you can do better, I'd say go ahead. Do it if you feel like you can. But when you get to things like this, this is the part in general that you're eventually going to be probably going nuts at. And I'm going to laugh when that happens. There we go. Because the, all the different gearboxes have their own kind of almost screwy ratios of like, you know, wanting to spring apart. Fortunately, I just got lucky because this one is one of those weird ones that actually doesn't have a tendency to want to fling every little single part every which way. So thank goodness for me. Fortunately, it doesn't change the fact that only difference is all the annoying tension is right on there, but unfortunately half the time I'd have to be, if it was a different model, I'd have to be holding everything in place ace almost at the exact same time while having to do this. And trust me, that's a nightmare and a half. Okay. There we go. A little bit greased up, but so whatever. Okay, now I just slightly try to get that on top. Push that down. Fortunately, I know that's going to be a problem, so I should probably go that way. And then I should try to nudge it forward like so. Make sure that that doesn't get in the way. Come on. Ah, <sighs> uh, for crap's sakes. One thing in general of this, usually these parts are always the ones that spring out of place. Not gonna if it's still decently oiled up from whoever probably owned the weapon last, so I have to thank whoever had it. Unfortunately, I think in general, like, yeah, I actually remember buying this one from somewhere, so if anything, I was the one who actually bought it to keep it maintained, so I have to thank myself on that one. <laughs> it's been a while since I've actually took this one apart, so. So the reason why I enjoy seeing me but actually use it differently, and unfortunately I realized I didn't have the spring pushed in the right spot, so as usual, like I said, I still make mistakes, but you can't really change that with most people. Just because in general we make mistakes and look like idiots doesn't mean we have to potentially keep it and she blurting it out at everyone. It's like, hey, we are who we are. <sighs> You can't accept yourself in general fear of idiosyncrasies and even your own craziness. And you have no right to be judging anyone else. <sighs> That's one reason why I don't really listen to people half the time. I'll just kind of nod my head and say whatever. But, eh. It's just probably because, like I said, of how different I become over time. Like I said... Not going to talk about it, just that it's just kind of, well, yeah, not say much about it. A lot of part of my life aspect that I don't like talking about. And as you can see in general, this is going to be that one issue in general that sometimes, sometimes you'll get this, the trigger wants to try springing out, and this part it keeps, you know, getting on this little lip right here, which sometimes doesn't close. And as you can see, these are trying to spring apart, which can eventually be a big pain in the friggin' asshole. <sighs> Okay, so see what I'm doing? So I'm trying to get that linked up there first, then I'm going to try moving the parts in there to kind of, you know, line up as best I can. And I'm going to push that out of the way, push that out of the way, and boom, there we go. And to make sure, oh. and as you can see, that's now going to be construct, uh, you know, not stuck like it was before.
Fortunately, all gearboxes are different, but more or less they're kind of all the same in that kind of sense of uh, sensibility. Well, at least the M4s anyway. All I know is at some point later on when I get back to uh, probably doing airsoft when this uh, coronavirus punchy blows over, I'll probably have a lot more stuff in general for you guys to probably buy, so keep in mind that. I'm also working on something called the Nemesis Pistol. Unfortunately, I'm still waiting for parts to arrive and stuff, but think of it as something kind of really nuts. Unfortunately, I am, when I do in general, I'll probably showcase it. And I'll probably say in general, I'll probably like, I'll probably say, hey, anyone want one of these? And also, like I said, I'm working on another crazy thing. Actually, the cameraman who's actually behind the camera at the current moment is actually helping me his, uh, with that to some degree. So uh, thank you, camera guy. <laughs> but um, uh, I'm working on a really crazy uh, thing. Uh, fortunately, it still might take a long time. Who knows in general when I'll get that done. But I'm actually working on the Executioner, which is unfortunately, if anyone knows what that is, it's from... Uh, the Call of Duty Black Ops series. It's literally a revolver that fires, but actually, you know, the shotgun shells. <laughs> it's gonna take a lot of time to build an airsoft version like that, but unfortunately, I just need, I still need the shells first so I can do the proper mapping of like how how big it is, the cylinders and so on and all that fun stuff. But, but unfortunately, yes, I'm gonna be using the usual shells that hold the gas inside the shells. So that, that were in general, when it hammers on the back like uh, like a grenade shell, it will eventually hit the back of the pin, or in this case, the firing uh, mechanism, which would be the main, you know, what would those things called again? I think it's like the, I forget what they're called. I think it's like the little kind of, uh, why can't I, why can't I say this stupid thing right? This happens every time. Worse with words, but that aside, it's the little gunpowder cartridge in general that usually ignites the thing and fires it down the tube and then when she puts a hole through so anyone that you're putting the aim of the thing at unfortunately the idea is like the revolver itself is gonna be really customary so it's gonna be like that fortunately uh will i if i do build one will i sell it i'm no pretty sure people are gonna ask am i ever gonna build one or sell it Yes, I probably might actually if I if they if they if it's really well received and people really like the like when I'm using it really like the idea of it I might sell them but unfortunately if you're out of state which in that when I use that as a joke But I'm actually yes, I actually work in Canada So uh, it might be a little harder to you know move around But if you're willing to somehow make the trip all the way up here I'll potentially do a really really reduced price thing because it'd be like Oh yeah, if I obviously I'll have a few obviously publicly made by then, but if you're gonna make the trip all the way up here, then yeah, I can obviously see giving you a better price <sighs> because you know you're taking the time to come all the way here. And fortunately, like I said, you'll have to figure out how to get it back across in general and all that fun stuff. You know, that's up to you in general once you get over uh, to Canada uh, standards in general. It's your it's your problem afterwards once once I give it to you at that point. <sighs> But it means in general if there's an issue with it, well then unfortunately you're kind of crap on luck because unfortunately the only parts that would be made for it would probably be made by me. But if you, but I'll probably give you a card and so on so that way you can keep in contact. So if there's an issue, there's a chance I can send you parts, but that aside. <sighs> there we go. So that's pretty much that in a nutshell. Now time to put it all, reassemble it, put a battery to it, put it with a motor in it, and then show you the fact that it actually does work. But first things first, looks like my computer's acting funny again. Eh. Before that, before I do anything more. Yeah. Alright, now reassembling the sucker. Yep, always make sure that ensure that the little, the little are jagged ends. As you can see, there's two different ends, one's jagged. Make sure to always remember which side you put that on. 
because it's going to be much of an issue if you're trying to pound out one other side. Fortunately, luckily enough, I usually put on that side, so it's just going to usually just kind of whap. Or maybe, it, well, maybe in the video it could be maybe the other way, but as long as it holds it in there, right? You caused me a bit of pain on my hand. I'll do you last. Also, yeah, most of these little uh, safety mechanisms, half the time in general, they're all different. So sometimes when you think, oh, I'm going to switch mine on my rifle, sometimes even though they say they might be the, for the same uh, brand, sometimes or even for the same company brand, sometimes they don't work. I'm not too sure what's up with that. So even though you... Do you think you might be buying the part for your weapon or something like that? Another rookie mistake I just made, but um, even when you think you're getting the right parts, sometimes it's better to, you know, consult the person who's been doing this since pretty much, uh, well, I've been doing it, this kind of stuff, um, before Punishy Force on Force actually became, uh, well, I went, well, yeah, before the new management took over. <sighs> it was a lot of fun, actually. I still enjoy the fact that I managed to, like, I'd help them out. Unfortunately, yeah, I wouldn't really get paid for it. But in the sense that, even though I didn't get paid for it, uh, they if they if they had leftover parts lying around that were broken or stuff like that, I'd usually, uh, like, some of the parts that I have are actually uh, one of the one of the rifles actually is actually what I have from one of them because uh, it was busted up really badly, and they're like, hey, this thing's pretty busted up. Well, and we don't need it, so obviously, um, at the time, it was it was actually really trashed. I had leftover parts uh, from my own rifle that was trashed, and most of it is actually what this thing is now, to some degree. More or less the internals, actually. The main overall, but actually, uh, main gun itself was kind of like, I got this thing a long time ago, so... <laughs> if it's still kicking, you know that it's been Panachia with me for a long time. Okay. Go. Fortunately, like I said, sometimes that just usually lips over, so I got lucky on that. Yeah, okay, that like so. And as you can see, like I said, this has a flat end, so like I said, if you try to put that, that's gonna do nothing because, like I said, this little part is messed up, you know, this little part, well, it's explanatory at this point if I just show. Kind of just sits there like that. Okay, that's a little too tight. Let's do that again. There we go. Yeah, half the time when you want to do that stuff, you don't just bolt it up as hard as you can get it because one that squishes the internal sometimes um i've seen this with a, a lot of rifles and even some pistols which actually just drives me nuts you guys always seem to uh, and that also goes for people who actually um uh actually would it kind of drives me nuts people who actually who are sens sensibly qualified to actually do these things even make that mistake i get the fact that it's just human error so i don't have anything against that but it still drives me nuts that even people who are potentially meant to actually be doing repairs even make this mistake like this one person um when i was there one time this uh it was actually just absolutely horrid in my mind um i actually uh, he was actually planning to get rid of uh an m4 and all of the internals and everything were like really souped up and he's like this thing is pretty much you know busted done in and kind of thing he's like hey anyone want a uh want a m4 that's busted up in general that's well whatever i don't remember but uh whatever i uh the, the that aside he's just like yeah this thing's done in and i uh, obviously i shot up and eventually was the first one right over to him and unfortunately the other guy's like the other guy was close to me he's like ah oh, that guy who called first so lucky me and afterwards, when I got a good look at it uh, for a few minutes, I'm like, hey, your thing's actually not really busted in general. It's just some slight errors. And he's like, oh, well, could you possibly fix it? And I said, heck, and I even told him, he's like, well, 
I'll just sell it to you regardless. I'm like, not. Nah, I'd actually, if anything, I'd rather actually fix it up for you for a small fee. And whether what you do after that, you can even sell it in general after that point. So you can make something off of it. So that was fun. Um, uh, fun enough. Uh, it just needed some slight resetting on the inside, but unfortunately, like it had some like control pad and stuff, which I didn't understand. But I just did it the only way that I thought would be best. But it was a bit of a nightmare because, uh, unfortunately, like I said, like this stuff right here was connected, so it didn't go through. So I had to be very, very careful not to mess with anything because, like I said, if I push on something, it could cause the wire to clip itself, which was a nightmare in itself. Oh my gosh, just thinking about it still gives me a slight headache. But I was able to do it. But the funny, the very hilarity part was it is the fact he, he said he's taken it to other places, even be too soft and some other places around town on that bench. He could not seem to get it to work yet. This, this idiot in general, when she gets it, figures out, it figures it out after a few minutes. I just say, oh, it's either the trigger, which I, what I said, it's probably the trigger or like, you know, where I just showed you the fact that it's pushing, but it wasn't exactly a none of that because it was a different complete over different system where it was pushing the button instead of like the actual wire so that that was cool um which i think was really a cool system so that uh, so if anything i'd love to have got my hand on that rifle well, because if i bought it i would have had it so <laughs> but you know um uh fixing over potentially aspect of uh, having so and besides even the way even this still it gave me more knowledge of how to repair more of those typings anyway so if anything the knowledge on learning more was more of a payment in itself even though i still took a bit of a payment but it's the reason why i don't ask for very much because i won't lie when i do this stuff sometimes i'm kind of an idiot to it but i just know sometimes uh, like i said if if you ever want me to fix stuff just keep in mind um i'm not really familiar with all the types but i can do the best that i can but keep in mind that I sometimes might either make it worse or better, or sometimes I may even get lucky enough that I even repair it. So when you do ask me to repair things, just keep in mind that um, I will do the best that I can that, I, that I'm physically uh, able to do. So just keep that in mind. <sighs> but like I said, I can only do the best with what knowledge I can find on the internet or what I can just scrounge up. <sighs> This isn't the best that you can ask for because if it's technically busted, and oh my gosh, I forgot to add one or two screws onto the inside. Oh my gosh. Well, as you can see, well, I forgot to put. No, wait, hold on, no, wait. These are for that. Okay, never mind. Ah! Maybe it's just maybe inside being stuck inside for a long exposure of time is it what's driving me nuts to make these mistakes. Who knows? And this is the reason why, in general, why, why, why I'm able to look at a gun and almost tell what, I, what I'm supposed to do with it. <sighs> because I've done things like this too many friggin' times to count. <laughs> Which always makes me laugh at Apple Capital Airsoft when, when, when new owners are trying to figure out like what the heck's going on and yet I just do it like that. It's because I've had this kind of experience under my belt for a, even at the same time when the old owners used to own. <sighs> Also, yeah, uh, if uh, I remember the oh, I can't remember the the main uh, owner's name of the old one. I think, yeah, no, I remember Scott. Scott, if you're somehow watching this, thanks for letting me finish. You know, fix your stuff uh, or the weapons that you had when you used to own the place. It was a lot of fun, and it definitely led to my me having a little bit more confidence in doing this kind of stuff. And you did support me on occasion when I was like doing that modification mod for the for the uh, revolver. Fortunately, I've Fortunately, at one point, I got a little bit of amnesia at one point, which is kind of a pain in my butt that I somehow got amnesia. That's a different story. I haven't really told anyone about that, but I'm not planning to or explaining how that happens to anyone. Family-wise, yeah, I don't know. I, I just don't really talk to people about things because I don't really want them to worry. Even though, in general, if they do, I just don't like people having to worry about me. Because that's my problem. No one else's. <sighs> Even though, in general, it does kind of make me... Make me more stressed out in general. It's the one reason why I people bug me in the sense. It's like, why do you need to worry about me? It's like, 
I'm fine, even though apparently I'm not. It's like, hey, I just have to keep doing what I can in general. It's like, in you trying to care about me just kind of adds a little bit of more stress to me because it means in general that I'm without your worried, which makes me worried, and then eventually it just adds to me being even more stressed out. Making my life a lot more difficult. So if I get a little start talking depressively or someone just just say in Java One, like I said, I'm somewhat still programmed like a somewhat like a mannequin. So if you just tell me to shut up and stop in general, yeah, I can do that. <sighs> or in general, just try to change. Just say, can you change the subject? <laughs> like I said, my life's really screwy. <laughs> I just realized in general that could also be used as a joke at this point because I'm actually trying to screw in some bolts. Nah. Unfortunately, people are asking, like, what about my P90? And unfortunately, I'm thinking, like, screw it. I'm just going to build a barrel for it um, out of some excess junk stuff that I have and see if that potentially will... Uh, unfortunately, I managed to find my old uh, files, unfortunately, of all the things that I did when, when I used to actually work at. Uh, of course, of course, all the do's and don'ts. So unfortunately, it took forever to find all those stupid books that I had on in general that I wrote things in. But... That aside. So now we got it like this. Now in general to take one of these, or if it's even maybe not the same, who knows, it might not be, but that is to take that the, the other one and uh, this sucker and put see in general if it's uh, similar or not similar to that one. Yeah. And the reason why I'm holding it down is because it might try to spring off on me. And is that the right sizing? Uh, Okay, it is, but it's not going in. Okay, no, that's actually one an inch too size bigger or less. Okay, that one's too big. That one was the same one I used, but this one. Nope. No way to show Okay, let's see. Uh, this one maybe? Nope. All right. That's what these other two are for. Nope. Ah! Why are they always so strange in general for these things? I get the fact that it's pretty much like, yeah, you don't want people messing with your guns in general in a, to some degree, but hey, if you can't even get into with your own gun in general, then how the heck are you supposed to actually modify it? Companies keep that in mind. Also, if people are trying to figure out how the heck I eventually increase the weight and durability, that's easily just, that's pretty simple actually. Half the time that what I do for that, or even cause little uh, idiosyncrasies in the gun itself, is actually pretty, really, actually it's really stupidly simple half the time. Hmm, okay, so it's the exact same version. Eh. Okay, so it doesn't really anything too much in general, in that it's pretty much probably the internals on this one. Okay, so it's actually one of those models, but as you can see, it's one of these older types. But since it's actually been kind of, uh, since it's newer and so on, I'm not too sure what the, what's in really, which, what, like, I know these models are, like, have that scope thing, but this is just my own that I found at a pawn shop, so I'm not too sure if those internals are meant to be that kind who knows i wouldn't really know if anyone wants to point that out to me go ahead like i said i just i don't really know half the parts or what they're called i just i just know how to fix them that's all i really know how to do
Yeah, what I'm doing is I'm just trying to clean out the, the main little parts in between. If you don't clean your weapon in general, I guess the joke in general, I can make a joke out of this, which I will. Um, if you don't maintenance your gun, yeah, unfortunately, I don't know why people keep saying this to me. It's like, just because I don't use it, doesn't. why should I have to maintenance? It's because it doesn't matter in general. Just like in real life, things will degrade regardless in general. Just at a slower rate if you're not using it. Fortunately, anything in general in life is the same. Just because in general you don't, just because you sit on the couch doesn't mean in general that you're not, because you're not doing anything doesn't mean you don't get older. It's like that. Just because you sit on the couch and, uh, and don't do anything doesn't mean you get either, either any stupider or wiser. Who knows? It's really up to the person that's actually doing what they're doing, Benji, if they want to get wiser or stupider. <laughs> okay. Okay. As you can see, Andrew, what I was just doing, it's like, see, it wasn't going in properly, uh, so it wasn't like, you know, pushing down like that. So I was just, sometimes you have to kind of, you know, get at different angles to get that to do so. Can, can be a pretty annoying. The easiest way that I find to deal with these is half the time but I actually put that like this, that like that, and so on. Yeah. Nah. And then just put it on sideways and try to eventually get it on there quick before that little peg falls like so. Can be quite annoying, but sometimes if you even tilt it like just like that and kind of just go. Oh, come on. Yeah. It sometimes takes a while. I guess the better bet in general one that I just kind of you know tilt it upside down because I don't want it to you know try getting it on a on an unscaled part because I can't tell perfectly. And let's see that can happen. And if you're in a certain place in general, sometimes you can sometimes lose the piece entirely. And if you screw up in general, you can lose certain parts easily. And at the same time, this one she can come unloose from its main spot which can you know when you try to firing it big a big whoops or issue And the second issue of having to thumb these things. Get the wrong one. Oh my gosh, that explains it. Yeah, I grabbed the wrong one. That explains a few things. Failure L L12. Even probably changing that won't help. Come on. There we go. That time I got it. Not 
to make sure I don't strip it because the thing's oversized. I'll use a smaller one. Yep. Yeah, sometimes when you try to over torque it in general, it gets a little over screwed. And fortunately, it looks like this one's kind of spinning just a little bit, so I shouldn't push the issue and cause it to strip. So I'll just loosen that just a little bit, but still kind of tighten that just as best I can. Yeah, when they're plastic or whatever, it has a tendency to strip a lot more worse. So it's one reason why I like companies who actually go with their grips to have the metal ones. But even still. Yeah. Now, the last thing is to do is grab a magazine, probably a, what, what do you call those ones again? The ones that potentially don't require the winding. I'll have to grab one of those. I'll have to grab a battery. Oh, fortunately, you guys have to wait here for a minute while I can do that. Oh, I regret finishing not getting a chance to cut my nails. That's really starting to be punchy. I'll have to do so later today. <sighs> if I just had my speed loader, give me a minute. Might have some more one line right here if I'm lucky enough. But hey, now that I'm not turning around, you're supposed to only be looking at the main screen. No one's allowed to look around the room. Now, son of a... Looks like I already had some loaded. So I'll just use the ones that were clearly already loaded. Like, they clearly forgot to take babies out of. Now for the battery. Assuming that one is charged somewhere. Pretty sure the one's got to be somewhere in the battery. Not too sure which one has power, so the idea is just to try it all three. But before that, before I do any of that, I need to take a minute to do something important. Safety first as always, just to make sure. I don't know if the thing might have had a baby lodged in it. Doesn't matter. Should always punch you be careful. Safety first, like always. And yeah, anyone's wondering, you know, why I'm about firing these things in the past. Well, fortunately, like I said, one, uh, my family's pretty understanding. And fortunately, well, even my dad, when he was still alive, potentially, well, yeah, that aside. <sighs> Probably dead battery. Another one I forgot has a broken kind of a screwy end on it, as you can clearly see. I got this from somebody. Uh, I, I plan to go over to a place uh, to see if they if they can fix it. If anything, I'd say uh, if you're wondering where, I'd say Hobby Wholesale. They have sometimes different ends and pieces. It's actually how I sometimes get different battery types or pieces onto my things. Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah. Oh, for the love of heaven, that is un unholy. What is that getting stuck on? Let go. Ah, another dead battery. Crap. Well, unfortunately, we'll have to cut it here for the moment. Unfortunately, I'll probably get back to uh, recording in a few minutes once we have our charged battery. So we'll have to cut it here. We'll add it. Well, unfortunately, yes, it won't be a cutaway of me doing anything. But unfortunately, at the same time, I'll make a separate video. So we'll have to kind of catch a different video from aside from that, which will eventually I might be able to explain what I was doing earlier, which would be this. But that aside, while we wait for the battery to charge. So I have to end it here for the moment. Hey! Well, we're back, but unfortunately it took a while, but we I got the battery charged. I've yet to test fire it still. Also, uh, this, let me, uh, I got the test mags. Unfortunately, first things first, make sure that the battery works. Uh, it's a delay probably on timing, which is probably be a, probably by about like two, three days, but I, I didn't bother to do it any further until I got the stuff working. So that way everyone knows that it still works properly. Yeah. Oh, come on, go in there. There we go. As usual, we both have the safety glasses, so... Oh, hmm. Ah, what is up with this thing now? It's getting power for whatever weird reason. It doesn't seem to be doing anything. Strange cat. Yeah, they were connected, so I don't get on the fact why that's not doing anything. It's possibly that the wires to the thing are probably messed up again. Ugh.
for the pain. Okay, there we go. Just need some clean off. There we go. Yeah, that can also be another issue, I guess, is if the wires aren't potentially connected right around here, here, or if they're just kind of dirty and it can somewhat be time like if it's a dead trigger I kind of forget sometimes the stupid things like that make sure that the FPS and everything is good. Yeah, and we have the mags right here. Make sure just to make sure that wasn't flipped again.
want to take a look at the FPS in general. It's a little, uh, it's funny because beforehand, this thing used to shoot pretty darn low. But as you can guys, clearly guys clearly see on the readings in general, um, it's even gone up a little bit. Uh, well, well, that's the last time I used it. It was actually, it's probably now shooting maybe a little too high, which is giving me a bit of a pain in my butt. Because unfortunately now it's shooting too high. But like I said, if you maintenance your gun properly like you've seen me doing in general, boom, you get the result of pretty much a, a slight increase on uh, FPS and your thing pretty much goes back to almost almost like factory default to some degree. but Or even a little bit better. So pretty much you've seen it here. And so yeah, it's pretty much fun. Because like I said, the thing was actually at one point only shooting around two something at best. But now it's kind of gone up by almost like quite a lot. It was I think it was like... A 290 something in general just around the 300 range range and kind of a little bit kind of around uh, but afterwards when I kind of slowly fixed up a little bit it was shooting around 340 and with the what do you call it slight tune up and kind of fix up like and kind of recalibrating it back to the way it was it, as you can see it went pretty much back all the way up to that which is highly highly hilariously stupid so like I said maintenance your weapons Because unfortunately, we have pretty much get something nice and general that feels good, and like I said, it's still pretty much you very using very minor minor parts. Take a close up on the battery so they know what kind of battery it is. It's one of those types, so it's decently okay. But I'm like people always think in general, like using lipo will give you a little bit of that, a little bit of excess oomph. But really, no, a lipo is pretty much in my mind more dangerous because it can explode or catch fire. But really, all you need to do is get some minor stuff, and then you pretty much can achieve the same kind of bull crap that you would with one of those lipos with one of these little suckers if you just do your gun right. Yeah. If you guys want me to do something like that during during at some point when this coronavirus slightly blows over, or if I'm lucky enough, I'm gonna have a lot of parts lying around. If you do things right, you can actually use a slightly what do you call oversized uh, RC battery or something like a little bit bigger. If you make the modifications to your weapon, you can fit one of those, which still makes up the amount of excess power that you would be using for a lipo, but you're still using a uh, milliamp or whatever the crap in general uh, instead of potentially something that can explode in your hand in general catch fire or potentially cause more damage to your gun it's like in my mind like propane it could it could it's it's cheaper it's a little bit kind of this or that but who really cares it doesn't change the fact that it's like yeah it's kind of like for the big boys you think but really in general i don't really care about that stuff if it potentially causes my weapons to malfunction or have problems later down the line but hey i can't really complain because when it breaks, I get your parts, I get your weapons, so I can't really complain because that goes good for me, less worse for you because it means the, the internals and all that other stuff is still valuable stuff. Just fix it up or even tune it because sometimes it can just call, be a simple uh, problem in the calibration because of the, the, of the voltage not being put, actually set right and other stuff, all the other fun little, little stupid little uh, idiosyncrasies and all things, including potentially machines such as as uh, uh, your Xboxes and all the other fun stuff, but it's that's fun. That's another thing uh, aside. But if you want to know about that, it's just I might at some point, if you guys want me to, I might just show you what I how I kind of well, not really. I won't share the main secret, but I'll show you how I kind of slightly go about potentially doing that kind of stuff, or kind of maybe explain a little bit of it. But until around that time, if you guys get in there, say in general, say hey in general. <laughs> Looks like a slight, I would have caught a phone call on the phone, so that's just kind of what's going on. But other than that, that's pretty much this done, and pretty much, like I said, how your trigger on the inside potentially might be malfunctioning or having issues, 
or sometimes it just might be actually the wires are need a little bit of cleaning and sometimes it's just a, if you're using the fuse types types in general I'd probably uh, in my mind I don't really know what they're for but I think it's supposed to help kind of regulate voltage so that your gun doesn't go in, into like craziness in general on the internals if anything I'm planning to kind of figure that out a bit more but here's my own, own thoughts on it if, it if I could be wrong couldn't be right who knows I could just be an idiot but my thoughts in general of the fact if you can find one put one on your well, my thoughts in general, like, sorry for the keep cutting in and out, it's just the thing keeps taking me to re uh, redo the phone thingy. But my thoughts on it is the fact that it's just the fact that, uh, well, uh, I don't go over the main explaining, but, um, Fuse plus Bonacci, uh, LiPo helps the gun probably regulate itself so it doesn't screw up the internals in a way, way, even though most of the time it never really does. But in just my thoughts on it, it's just the fact that, uh, for a reason, sometimes like uh, you'll have oh, problems over like after a long exposure of time in general, it might have a huge issue. But I'm thinking of having a fuse might make it last longer. I, maybe who knows? Who's, but I thought maybe I might try that at some point if I ever use potentially a, a lipo gun because even though I have a tendency, to, like uh, I always have a tendency to change most of my guns back into potentially metal nickel hydride. Even if I get a modified one that is using lipo, I prefer to change them back and then kind of you know mess around with them in general until I get a perfect ratio potentially that the battery is now supplying enough power to still run the operation system even with the new modified stuff. I could probably go over a video of that at some point, uh, but I won't probably show the process to some degree. Well, maybe I might if you guys want to learn, but until then in general, I'm planning to pretty much call it here, but I still need to thank a guy who actually, uh, who's another YouTuber for kind of getting me into this, I might start, th uh, I might do a little kind of a review on that on the next video once I, what well, should be probably a little while, I'm probably going to do this airsoft shotgun next, next, uh, which is the one that I have lying around, so I guess I'll catch you later, but that's pretty much the M4 disassembly and reassembly of pretty much what, the trigger and pretty much right down to the full internals, right down to the pretty much every reassembly, so hope you enjoyed and I'm hoping in general this helps. You guys uh, keep your stuff clean, maintained, and at least working properly. So, uh, so in general, I don't have to do it. But at the same time, I can't really complain because it means cash in my pocket. And it means also stuff that potentially you don't really know how to use. Well, I'm not trying to make you sound like idiots, but I'm just saying in general, it's the stuff that you don't really know the little idiosyncrasies of. And it leaves you with a broken, uh, a broken or malfunctioning thing because you didn't know about how to use it properly. And that leaves me to, you know pick it right up and use it for myself. So like I said, I can't complain, but uh, as you, we already know, and as usual, this is potentially Airsoft, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, this is the Airsoft uh, Black Market Cat from, if I remember correctly, Force on Force, yes. So yeah, um, if you're wondering why I haven't uh, been doing YouTube videos or anything, it's just because I never really got around to it because of everything, but with this coronavirus kind of going around, I thought in general, why the heck not? If you see my other videos, you can kind of see what I've done over the years and how much weight I lost, clearly. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll try to get back to you in general on my shotgun as soon as possible. Enjoy the rest of your day.